Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for September 4th, 2022, around 1220 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for a major hurricane to form in the Atlantic Basin over the next several days, and the potential also for a storm to impact the Baja California Peninsula. So let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that two things across the basin stand out today. First of all, we have Tropical Storm Earl, which is to the northeast of Puerto Rico. And then we also have newly intensified Hurricane Danielle. This is now a hurricane once again, well to the southwest here of the Azor Islands. And this will be moving towards the northeast over the next several days. And we'll have to watch this for potential impacts to portions of Europe over the next week or so. So if you look here at Tropical Storm Earl, again, right now, sustained winds are around 50 miles per hour and a pressure of 999 millibars. This is 85 miles to the north-northeast here of St. Thomas, and this will be moving towards the northwest over the next several days and will likely stay well away from any potential land here of Puerto Rico or the um, you know Dominican Republic area. And then eventually this will intensify into a hurricane sometime by Monday evening going into Tuesday morning here. And then eventually, as this interacts with a jet stream to the north, this will intensify really rapidly and will be likely the season's first major hurricane. All models call for this to become a Category 3 or stronger. And the official intensity forecast now brings this up to 115 miles per hour, which brings this to Category 3 intensity. If you look here at the visible satellite imagery from this afternoon, we notice that the storm has had a very big blow up of convection but the low-level center still remains on the far eastern side of all of this convection here, or the, the western side of the convection, rather. And we notice that most of the convection here is off towards the, the center's east. And this has really not allowed the storm to intensify very significantly because we're still dealing with a lot of dry air and wind shear across the area. Nonetheless, though, this is still bringing some impacts to portions of the northern part of the islands here, the U.S. British Virgin Islands, and even parts of Puerto Rico as well could see some heavy rainfall, maybe the potential for some isolated flooding uh, as a result of this, but nothing significant at least. And this will be moving towards the northwest over the next several days. The recon plane that was in there from earlier this morning, again, found that we did have a center reformation overnight. The old low-level circulation was outrunning here and got pulled back in to this convective mass and so the recon plane did find pressures of around 1,004 to 1,005 millibars, which is certainly a lot higher than what it was uh, over the past couple of days, really, that this was about 999 yesterday. And it's still officially 999, but the recon plane found about 1,005-ish. And the wind speed certainly has come down a little bit as a result of that low-level circulation kind of dissipating or and or kind of being reformed in this convective blob here. So the wind speed here peak about 45, about 40 to 45 knots. So a little bit less than what we were seeing yesterday uh, around this particular time. Now, if we look at the H4 forecast here, this is the 200 millibar wind. So we're looking at the wind pattern up at about 39,000 feet. We notice that right now the storm is still getting sheared because we have this broad upper level low, kind of this the tropical upper trosopheric trough cutting across here. And this has really created a little bit of shear across our storm environment right now. We also look at the moisture field. It's still not all that moist. There is a lot of dry air still being pumped into the circulation here. And so it's going to take about another day or two before we actually get rid of that. However, the upper level environment begins to change. This is by Monday evening. So tomorrow evening going into uh, Tuesday morning. Uh, we have an upper level pattern that becomes more conducive because our storm now is actually moving upright, basically moving generally towards the north, and it's actually aligning with the shear vector because our storm right now, kind of going something like this, it's going against the shear vectors right now, but once it aligns under the shear, it actually is going to have a very favorable interaction, and then we also have a strengthening trough over to the north that will be swinging eastward. And this uh, upper level flow kind of merges here with this outflow pattern and begins to really deepen our storm by Wednesday morning. So this is Wednesday morning here. We got a pressure of about 971. 
So comfortably, this is within the category two range at this point. And we notice this jet interaction that occurs and boom, now it's off to the races. And we get a storm just to the east of uh, Bermuda at this point with a pressure of 945 millibars. We certainly have the sea surface temperature profile to support this very warm uh, waters, even uh, further north than what the storm is positioned at the five day period. So this theoretically could get very strong here. Probably we're talking maybe a mid range category four hurricane uh, by this time sometime on Friday. And this certainly could be a little bit more intense than what the current Hurricane Center forecast shows. But where is this thing going to go? Well, take a look here at the European forecast. It's a little bit complicated. So if we take a look here at the 0Z European, we notice here's our players up on the board. Massive upper level low right now uh, to the west of uh, Europe at this point. We've got Danielle and then we've also got Earl right there. And we notice that one of the things that's steering Earl currently, we've got this trough here and we've got a weakness in the subtropical ridge, basically just allowing our storm to drift northward because now it's a little bit stronger and deeper in the atmosphere. But we start to get a, an interesting pattern. First of all, we got this upper level low here. We've got a low here and then a ridge that is trying to build to the north here on the European forecast. And we notice that that ridge actually does build and it swing shots our storm close to Bermuda. It actually swings it westward pretty close to Bermuda and then phases with this upper level uh, trough here and tries to kick this on out to sea. So there is still the potential that we could get uncomfortably close to the island of Bermuda. Uh, if we actually look here at some of the ensembles here, we notice that, again, the European ensembles generally keep this far enough away that we're not going to have to deal with significant impacts. Uh, the wind field will be expanding, but most of the forecast guidance continues to, to have the wind field away from the island of Bermuda, which is certainly good news. Uh, but there is still some models that do maybe get this a little bit close and swing shot it back here, uh, pretty close to the island of Bermuda. So it is just something to monitor, but uh, as of right now, there does not seem to be a tangible threat uh, and then eventually beyond the next about five to six days, you know, it's a little bit too uncertain, but could get a little bit close to Atlantic Canada here. So we'll see uh, whether or not this actually becomes a threat or not. Now, focusing on portions of the Northeast Atlantic, we also have Hurricane Danielle. Sustained winds right now of 80 miles per hour pressure, 983 millibars. This is still moving westward at about one, uh, but will begin moving northeastward sometime later today and pick up forward speed. This is the official forecast here from the NHC. And we notice that this is expected to pick up forecast over the next several days while it's turning towards the Northeast and then becomes a post-tropical cyclone by Friday as it is nearing somewhere closer to the area of Europe over here. So we'll have to monitor maybe some potential impacts in terms of rain and wind as this phases with an, a mid-latitude cyclone. Uh, and maybe the potential for impacts to Europe within the next about six to seven days. We'll see how that pans out here. If you look at the uh, H-War forecast here, again, the upper level wind environment, pretty favorable for the next several days here. This is about hour 42, our storm's actually deepening. Uh, this is forecast to intensify and could intensify a little bit faster than what NHC currently is showing at the moment. Eventually, however, this will be moving off towards the north and east here and eventually kind of gets undercut by some of that shear. But this again will end up at least somewhat close here to Europe within the next couple of days. We can take a look at some of that relative humidity and we notice how some of that relative humidity is kind of getting shunted out closer to Europe at this point. So maybe the potential for impacts there, but we'll have to just kind of continue to monitor the progress of that system as well. Now, real quickly, focusing on a new storm that has developed today, we've got Tropical Depression 12E. This is a new storm in the East Pacific Basin, and this could get pretty uncomfortably close here to the Baja Peninsula. Actually, here within five days, uh, we see the storm is potentially making landfall on the western part of the Baja Peninsula, and this could be near or at hurricane intensity as it is approaching. Now, it will run into cooler waters, uh, but this still remains the possibility that we could see a storm get uncomfortably close to the Baja Peninsula at this time. And it could be very close to hurricane intensity. And in fact, hurricane watches could be posted as early as this evening uh, for portions of the Baja Peninsula. So just something to monitor there. And we'll talk about that storm more in depth in tomorrow's video. All right. 
So that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll be talking to you guys again some more tomorrow.